Hello, I'm Chancellor James Anderson here at Fayetteville State University, and we are honored and appreciative to be, have been selected as the 2017 Tom Joyner School of the Month. Tom and his organization do an excellent job of supporting students at HBCUs, and we hope that these students ultimately will go on to great things. Well, when I came eight years ago, it was very important to develop a strategic plan that was based on measurable goals, based on a vision, uh, really exciting people about the fact that we were starting a new journey. And so the beginning was the creation of a strategic plan which did not exist up to that point. Getting faculty excited about what they could do to support student success, putting resources into student support efforts such as tutoring, advising, uh, a freshman college, etc. And so we had a lot of work to do to put the infrastructure in place, but once you get the infrastructure in place, then it's the commitment that you make in terms of resources, in terms of people, to make sure that these things work. In my first year, uh, there were three things that I stated, three major goals I stated that I wanted the university to pursue. One, we had to rebuild the academic reputation of the university. We didn't really have a strong reputation nationally. I wanted to make sure that our financial house was stable and I wanted to make sure that we built a model of student success and degree completion. We've done all three of those things, uh, but the academic reputation is one I'm very proud of because we have gone from almost being unknown to now leading the nation in national rankings in certain areas. For example, nursing. We're the number two nursing program in the uh, east and the southeast. Forensic biology online, we're ranked number one. Psychology, we're ranked number one. We have a center of excellence for geospatial intelligence, the only one in the UNC system and the only HBCU. We went from five million when I came to 12 million now. We have three patents. We have two other patents being developed. We have a center for defense and homeland security, the only one in the UNC system, the only HBCU with a full-blown center for defense and homeland security that focuses on cybersecurity, emergency management, etc. So our commitment to the military is strong. Fort Bragg is just up the road, and so that helps a lot. We've just really done some fantastic things. Anytime you get an honor from your peers, uh, it, it's very meaningful. And many of the individuals who've been associated with this organization for decades uh, are people that I look up to or people that I look at as peers. And, and so I'm very honored to have received that. It also is a statement about what I've done over a long period of time, not just what I've done since I've been at FSU, but what I've done across five to six universities. And um, it makes you feel valued. It makes you feel that what you've done has worth. And so I'm very honored to represent the university. Of course, I'm honored as an individual to receive this, and I look forward to the ceremony. Well, clearly the number one challenge for the five historically black universities in the system has been the budget. We had six straight years of budget cuts, which reduced our budget almost by $16 million, which is a lot for us. Maybe, you know, maybe for the larger universities like Chapel Hill or NC State, that's, that would be insignificant, but for us it's major. That uh, budget reduction in turn caused us to lose a large number of faculty, about 170 faculty. We lost 500 programs, academic programs, and 700 students. So that's a major impact on an institution. Uh, there has been, a, in the last year to two years, there has been an attempt by the UNC system to help recover some of those dollars, but after six straight budget cuts, it's been very difficult. Um, we also have had three presidents during my tenure here uh, of the UNC system, and each president has his or her own style. Each president, each board of governor members, we've had several changes in the board of governors. Uh, all of that affects, all of that, those leadership turnarounds affect the schools themselves. So that has actually been the biggest challenge. Uh, a second area of major challenges would be we have a lot of older buildings on campus. We need a lot of capital renovation. Um, our, business, our school of education is in dire need of, I could say repair, we actually need a new school of education. Uh, we have had the opportunity to build some buildings, which has been good, a new science and tech building, a new nursing building, Renaissance Hall, a new dormitory, and the renovation of the Student Center. Those have all been important, but we still have many challenges to face in terms of capital renovation. Well, when you begin from seven individuals culling $136 together 
to now us being a major almost corporation a huge organization educational organization and you think about what's 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 been the thread through all of that i'd have to say it's been the commitment of previous leaders it's been the alumni who've donated to the university and sustained it it's even been the unc system the unc system has made sure over the years that they've contributed to varying degrees to the success of their HBCUs. Uh, my role has been to just continue uh, that momentum to make sure that our historical legacy is recognized, but at the same time, we have to change with the times. And so we have to become a 21st century, competitive, global institution. That doesn't change your historical legacy. It just makes it more robust, it adds to it, et cetera. So being very clear at different points in your history about what you stand for, about your vision for the future. All of that's been very important. Of course, you're affected by outside forces like political times during the Civil Rights Movement. There were a lot of changes here. Um, but standing true to your values as a university, standing true to your commitment, bringing in good people who understand that's their role also, those are the kind of things that allows you to sustain that momentum. We started about a year and a half ago thinking seriously about what we wanted to do next year. A committee, a large committee of about 120 people were formed, and these are people from all areas of campus, and even some from off-campus alumni, for example. And that 120 were broken down into separate committees, and, and the real work is being done at the committee level. Heading all of this up is Dr. Bertha Miller, who uh, uh, works in my administration, and Bertha is the right person because Bertha is simultaneously writing the book on the history of the university, which will come out next year during the sesquicentennial. So we've asked each area on campus to tell us what they might like to do during that year, what event they might like to sponsor, if they're national speakers they might want. We called all that information together and then we kind of sifted through and looked at what things might be more appropriate or more affordable than others. Some of the speakers we wanted, for example, are just out of our range. Some of the entertainers, we're going to have a big gala, and we want to have a major entertainer for the gala. Um, so we're working on that now. In January, we will produce the first brochure of events for the year. Other things will be added, but at least this will give people an initial idea of the kinds of things that we're going to do during the sesquicentennial. We're raising funds for the sesquicentennial. Right now, we gauge that we'll need about $300,000 for the whole year to put this sesquicentennial on. One of the things I'm really proud of is next September, September of 2017, around the second week in September, we will actually um, have a kind of historical reenactment of the signing of the original document when we were founded. And our Chinese partners, the six universities that we have partnerships with, all presidents are coming from those universities and in addition the Mongolian president is bringing a Mongolian dance troupe and we'll have an event for the city so a lot of people you know it's, it's a good feeling when you're not just excited about it but people around the world are excited about it and uh, we really look forward to it you know one of the um, statements I had to make repeatedly when I first came and I still make it a lot is that yes we are an educational institution but we're also a business. And as a business, you have to be able to support yourself. And our alumni and our external supporters really need to understand that every year, we really need to make a push to sustain ourselves economically, to look at what factors impact us as a business. We need to make sure that people stay committed as chapters, if you're a chapter in a region or in a city, that that chapter stays committed. I've asked, for example, a lot of the chapters this coming year for the sesquicentennial to double their annual giving. So whatever they gave last year, I need you to double it this year uh, for the sesquicentennial. For the capital campaign, we have a $25 million capital campaign. Of course, you'd like to go over that and maybe raise $30 million. And I don't see why we won't raise the $25 million. We're almost at $21 million now. But to make people really contribute to that campaign because we're talking about the future of the university. We're not talking about just things that happen right now. We're not talking about just supporting a program. We're talking about robust giving, giving from the heart, 
giving because you believe in where we're going and what we're doing. But again, at the bottom line, at the end of the day, I'm running a business here, okay? And as a business, we need to make sure that we support the university. It's things like the Tom Joyner Foundation, other kinds of initiatives similar to that around the country that really help to sustain HBCUs. And Tom is highly committed. He's, he's shown that over decades, that he's highly committed to the support of HBCUs and to our students. And the four students who are gonna be Tom Joyner uh, Scholarship Award winners, we're so proud of them. And we're gonna make sure that we highlight them uh, next year. And Tom, we need you to come to the CIAA, man. <laughs>